So we were just at, I just made a drop shadow with her foot for this layer for kids in the middle. So um, I have the drop shadow now. And what I want to do is go back in to, let's do the drop shadow one more time. Um, so I click on the layer. So I think I lost my drop shadow in between. Go to click on drop shadow, open it up. I want to make a nice um, drop shadow. And I increase the size, the spread a little bit. You can really see a shadow happening now. Um, the distance, you can change it around. But you can see there's extra shadows there that I might not want. Um, so I press OK. Then I'm going to press, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Layer Style. And I'm going to go to Create Layer. Over here, a copy of the drop shadow in its own layer. So if you look right underneath kids in the middle, there is its own layer now of the layer shadow. You if you look as I click on and off the layer shadow, look at her foot, look at how the shadow goes on and off, but look at how the shadow adds so much realism to it. But maybe I don't want that entire shadow there. So now what I'm going to do is with the um, the shadow um, selected, I'm going to make a layer mask. I'm going to push B for brush and I am now going to use a very low opacity, maybe like a 10, 9 or 10 percent, and I'm going to paint off, making sure that I'm in my layer mask. I'm going to paint out whatever I do not want in that shadow. You can see now I'm, I might have painted off a little too much of the shadow. Um, I can always switch it back and get my shadows back. All right, it's a very subtle difference, but it's very much worth your time because I'm going to click off the shadow and click back on the shadow, with, especially with, with dangling legs that hang really far into the box. You want a little shadow. Look very hard at the people in themselves. You can see shadows. Shadows are good. People don't want shadows. They always think that they have to light it so that there's no shadows left in the box. You don't want to have of shadow in that box, it's going to almost appear like they're not there. Shadows are grounding. You need shadows in all forms of art. So adding that drop shadow is really important. Um, I said this isn't exactly the way I would have, um, this is not a final version for myself. Oh, one last thing. I'm looking at this picture here of my son and I can see there's a little imperfection from the box itself. There's some um, confetti left over. I might not want that. I would go to my uh, Jared pushing layer and I can use my um, any of my spot healing brushes. You can press J for spot healing and easily just clean up the box a little bit. Use a little bit of spot healing, um, anything that you would normally use to clean up your space a little bit. Um, and that's I think pretty much it. Over here I'm going to go back to my kids in the layer my kids in the middle. I'm going to take out this little hook that I had right there um, and I would clean up my boxes. Usually I would do that at the very end. Obviously I'm not finished yet but I'm giving you a sense of how I would do this and then I would keep adding in my boxes. Um, this is my process. Some people might go one picture at a time. Some people, and I have tried this also, sometimes I don't crop um, off the feet in the very beginning but I do it once it's inside the layer. Um, there's many ways to achieve the same final ending in Photoshop. You just have to figure out what works for you. I hope this was helpful and it gets you started with um, inside the box photography. Thanks for listening.